Hello everyone. A lot of my thoughts are always changing and evolving when it comes to diet and health and the transition to a raw vegan diet. And something I've been thinking a lot about is the emotions involved. Because a lot of people talk about trying to change their diet and they get a lot of um, emotional experiences happening. And they uh, sometimes they'll t t call it emotional detox. Sometimes people believe that when they stop eating you know, cooked food and other heavier foods and addictive foods, when they stop eating that stuff, that all these unprocessed emotions start to come to the surface. And that these have been repressed all these years. And then they say, oh, I need to, and had to eat the cooked food again to sort of stop all this emotional stuff coming up and all that. But I want to give you a different perspective on what I think that is. You see, when we change habits, our body or our mind or our subconscious or some part of us resists that. And it has a number of different strategies to stop you from changing your habits. And there's a few reasons for that. If, if you look back to an evolutionary perspective, creating habits that helped us survive was very important. And so when we created habits in our life, um, they eventually became really locked in, really set in which is what happens to us all, we're all habitual creatures. And they're very, they become very, very important. And it's very difficult to break those habits. Because those habits have obviously helped you survive so far. They've helped you live. Um, they've worked. And you have a habit of looking to the right when you go to cross the road, or you've got a habit of putting your seatbelt on in a car. Or you've got a habit of um, you know, avoiding dangerous situations or whatever it is. And these habits have really helped you survive and stay, you know, away from harm. So habits are a good thing. And also what the habit allows is once you've got used to a particular behavior, your brain and body can, your, your brain takes up less and less and less energy to do it because it's turned into a habit. It's like playing an instrument for many years at first it's very very difficult and you're putting a lot of time and effort and um, attention into it and then after a number of years eventually you're not even having to think about it when, you, when you're playing and it, it's so effortless and literally it's become really easy and the brain is not putting that much energy towards it anymore because it's become a habit and the neural pathways are all formed and they're like super highways and all that kind of stuff. Well it'll be the same thing with your diet but with the added impact that foods have an addictive element to them and therefore you're also dealing with real uh, withdrawal from addictive substances. So you're dealing with trying to break a habit which is difficult enough but you're also dealing with trying to break the whole dopamine reward system where it will make you feel terrible to not have the thing that it's trying to get you to take and that's why it's very difficult for people to, to, to break addictions. Essentially um, addictive substances hijack the reward centers of the brain and the way that our brain works is whatever gives us the highest dopamine hit is the thing that we're most motivated to do that's why people become drug addicts and they destroy their life because the drug is the most important thing and in, in to, to the way that their brain is working because it gives them the biggest dopamine high it doesn't matter how much it's destroying their life around around them and um and that's what's happening with food to some degree. The food that gives the highest dopamine reward is the food that people are going to want to go towards. And that's not bananas. And that's not apples. But they give a dopamine reward, but they just don't give the extra that some foods do it in an unnatural way. And when you try and get rid of that dopamine hit, it takes a while and you're going to feel really bad without it or, or you're going to be made to feel bad if you resist it and it feels physically difficult it's a visceral physical feeling on the inside to try and resist it it's really really hard um so you got to break that but i don't but and i believe part of the body the body and the mind actually has a strategy to try and keep you doing the same things to try and keep you on the same path, to try and keep you doing the same habit. Once you've formed these habits and these addictions, 
your body and your mind is all programmed to try and keep you doing the same thing. Therefore, when you try and change, it has strategies in place to try and stop you changing. That sounds a bit wild. Maybe that's something you've never heard. Maybe that's something I'm making up. But I don't think it is something I'm making up. I actually think there's quite good uh, evidence to show for that. So what happens is you go through mental, emotional, physical sensations, emotions, memories, and all sorts that is like a gauntlet of different challenges that you have to face and pass through to break the addiction and break the habit. And that's the real difficulty of this, is that memories will come up, thoughts will come up. It's almost like a person's in your ear telling you, just go and have that thing, just go and have that thing, just go and do it. You walk into the shop and you see it, you get the visceral reaction, you get the mouth salivating, you get the pull, the feeling like you've almost physically pulled towards it. You have to resist it. Um, Maybe you have dreams about it and you wake up and you think, maybe I should have it again. These dreams seem to be telling me something. But emotions will come up. And I think that this is not emotional detox. I think it is just emotions that the body brings up to try and trip you on your path to success with changing your diet and lifestyle. And that sounds strange that you're sabotaging yourself, but that's just how the body is set up. It's just how it's set up. And if we were in a perfect environment and had never been exposed to these wrong diets and wrong foods and wrong things around us, wrong substances, everything would have worked perfectly. Everything would work perfectly. And I now got the habit of the raw vegan diet and it works well for me. It's become my habit. So I that's that's what but anyway, going back to it, that's what I believe. You go through an emotional roller coaster. You go through the enthusiasm, and then that enthusiasm dies, and then you go through despair where you think, oh, I can't do this, I'm never gonna be able to do this. This is I always do this, I always fail. And you go through a roller coaster like that, and you have high points and low points and guilt and fear and shame and all this. And it's to me, it's not anything connected with anything else. It might That might bring up other memories for you and might bring up other things. But what you're really going through is the emotional drama of you changing, of you changing your habit and you changing yourself at a fundamental level, which your body is resisting. Your emotional system is resisting. Your mind system is resisting. Once you've tried it a few times, you realize it's the same thing every time. These emotions will come up every time. Every time you try and do change to different things, changing your habits. Every time. Change to a new exercise program. Change to learning an instrument, learning a language every day, new job. You go through doubts, fears, shame, guilt, thinking about the past, thinking about the future. It's a, it's a roller coaster until you get back to normal and establish a new habit. So the question is, is it worth it? And the answer is yes, it's worth it. It's a short term period of time, but you have to approach it knowing it's an illusion. It's an illusion. You have to understand that none of those emotions are actually real, in my opinion. And this is where people get caught up. They think that this is all emotional stuff, real stuff. It's not. It's, it, I'm telling you, it's an illusion. And you have to feel those emotions and rationally go, yeah, this isn't real. Push through it. Because a lot of people get caught up in their emotions like, I need to listen to my emotions. I need to do what my emotions tell me to do. It's not true. You actually need to create your emotions through creating the person that you want to be in, in your mind, creating the diet you want to have. And starting to believe and think and talking to yourself and acting like that's the diet you're going to be, you are doing or you're going to be doing. Start that mental process of getting yourself ready, thinking about it, believing it. And gradually that's how you develop new emotions that direct you in the right direction. What you don't want 
is emotions taking you the wrong direction? If you're in a toxic relationship, are you going to feel love for the person that's abusing you? You probably do. Should you be listening to those emotions? Probably not. I mean, really, if someone is abusive, if a job is abusive, if, um, I mean, I had bad jobs in my life or jobs that I didn't enjoy. I remember contemplating leaving those jobs and I felt emotions of attachment. I felt regret. I felt, what, what will those people do without me? How will they get on? How sad will they be when I go? Start to go through those emotions. But should I listen to those emotions? No. With um, the UK Fruit Fest, for example, there's been many times over the years where my emotions have said, I should stop doing this. This is too hard. This is whatever, you know. Did I listen to those emotions? No, because I, there was a, a, a greater purpose and there was an obligation to other people. But it's not always been every day complete positivity and passion towards doing it. And the same with the diet. I didn't always feel complete positivity and good feelings towards the diet. I didn't. But you cannot really live your life based on temporary emotions coming and going and following those emotions. You can't really do that. Um, what I believe you have to do is, is essentially create your new emotions, create the feelings through telling yourself what you, what you are and what you're going to be and using uh, affirmations and things like that and talking to yourself and creating a plan. And, and and creating new emotions towards a new goal, towards a, a new way of life. That's the way I think it really works. So that's why I don't think I'm going raw and I'm getting all this emotional detox and I can't deal with my emotions and I need to go back and eat the cooked food again to stop these emotions and I need to, it was too emotional for me. It's always going to be an emotional thing, but that's just anything where you're changing any new situation you're going to, going into, anything you're leaving, anything you're breaking up or changing, all sorts of emotions in life. But we can't just follow our emotions. It's it's not a good, not a good thing to do. We've got to learn to deal with these emotions and feel these emotions, and and even when they're really uncomfortable and confusing and they just sit there, we've got to learn how to live with them. And not try and avoid them and not be triggered by them to go and act in any inappropriate ways. Especially binge eating. It's, it's really not good. You've got to break these habits. You've got to break these cycles. So I... Um, what, do I what am I trying to say? I congratulate you on your journey towards better health. I uh, wish you good luck. And if you'd like to learn more at the UK Fruit Fest, you can go to the link below or go to fruitfest.co.uk and you'll be able to learn more about the Fruit Festival. And I hope to see you there. And um, if you're ever looking for help and support with this, please feel free to put a message below or put questions below. And join us on Friday for Fruity Fridays, fruitfest.co.uk slash fruityfriday. Uh, see you there. Okay, thank you very much.